Church Tech Weekly presents Infocom 2013, brought to you by Bose Professional Systems, committed to developing best-in-class products, tools, and services to create original audio experiences. All right, continuing our coverage of Infocom 2013 here in Orlando, Florida. I have Al McKenna. Al is one of the head dudes, and this is his baby. This is one of the new Avid consoles. This is the newest Avid console, and we wanted to bring it to you because a lot of people have been talking about it, and I'm just going to let Al take it away, and he's going to give you some of the highlights of what's going on with it. Okay. Yeah, thanks, guys. Okay, so um, it's uh, the way that we describe it is a professional Yukon and AVB-enabled digital mixing system for live sound and studio applications. And what's exciting about it is that it brings uh, a lot of new functionality that's never been done before by uh, a live sound console. So firstly, some of the things that we all notice about the way that the, the system is designed is that we've separated... I'm going to get right over here. Okay. Cool. Okay, we separated the three main elements that make up a, uh, a live sound system. Control, engine, I.O. And what we've done is we've... Uh, we've uh, design them into their own units, put them out on a network, and ask them to all talk to each other. So you'll notice that we have a networked control surface connecting to uh, a networked engine, connecting to two um, uh, remote stage units. So you can have up to four stage units with this particular system. So we call that the S3 control surface. It's compact, it's modular, 16 faders, and 32 encoders, 32 OLEDs, uh, and it's a Yukon-enabled control surface. So what that means is that we're controlling the venue software running on the engine over Yukon, our proprietary control network protocol. Um, but what that means is that the control surface uh, uh, in the future, when we bring future functionality into it, we'll be able to control Pro Tools. So with a button press on the control surface, it will stop controlling venue and start controlling Pro Tools. So what that means is that when you're doing your recording from stage directly into Pro Tools, after the recording has been made, you can press the button on the console and you can start doing the studio mix for the recording that you've just made. So what's really exciting about that is that it's the only live sound console in the world that can do that. It's really exciting stuff. That connects to the E3 engine, which is an HDX powered engine. So that's uh, working on our next generation of uh, mix engine technology. You know, uh, the, the, the version of uh, professional audio that um, professional engine that Pro Tools is working on right now, um, and that houses the uh, the HDX processing components, the uh, a CPU, and uh, and that's ha um, running the venue software, and that's the same venue software that runs on all the other venue systems from from S3L right up to uh, the most expanded D-Show system. Um, there's local I/O in both the uh, control surface and the engine. Uh, and the engine connects to up to four Stage 16 remote I.O. units. Each one of them has 16 mic pre's, that's why we call it Stage 16. So you can have 64 mic pre's on stage, uh, 72 within the entire system. Okay, so the, this, uh, this system here will range in price from 17995 from the most simple system configuration of a single stage unit, right up to just under 30,000 for a, a, a four stage unit system. So it's a uh, uh, it has great price per performance you know, ratio. Um, as the engine is, uh, is based on HDX, uh, it is the only live sound engine in the world that runs AEX plugins. So all of the new plugins that have been designed for Pro Tools over the last few years um, are all in that AEX format. And this, uh, this system runs that AEX format, AEX DSP format. So we can see actually within the software itself, we can run things like Revive 2, you know, that great reverb plugin. Uh, we can run uh, Avid Channel Strip, which is the, the, uh, the channel strip from the Euphonic System 5 broadcast desk. It's actually running here on this entry-level live sound console, which is a stunning concept. We can have multiple of those, and we can run 20 plugins simultaneously. Um, so that's a lot of creative choices for the, for the live sound guy here working on, working on this system. Um, and, and so everything, since we don't have we don't have as much control as on other Avid consoles that are on the desk, but everything is still from uh, very familiar on the screen, like we see right here with the other Avid desks. Absolutely, yeah. So, as I say, it's this exactly the same uh, software application. What's behind it is a whole new architecture of, of uh, processing audio for the for our live sound portfolio, um, but it is the same software, just updated to support S3L. Um, the desk is incredibly compact. We've done this on purpose. It's 16 faders. We know that space is at a premium, uh, and we want it to be portable. We know that guys need these things to be portable. So we've designed it with 16 faders, but we've made sure that we haven't uh, taken any shortcuts in functionality at all. Now, 
This may be hard to believe when you're first walking up to it and seeing that, well, it's only got 32 knobs on it and, and some uh, 16 faders and where is all the control that we can see on the other desks? Well, um, what we've done is we've used these high resolution OLEDs and we've put a lot of the parameter indication and, uh, and control um, displayed onto those OLEDs so that we don't need to use um, physical encoders that can only be one, you know, one control. We can vary the controls on the top of here. So on the surface itself, it has a banking section like the other uh, venue consoles do, um, laid out in a very similar way. It has a, an encoder assigned section, just like SC48 does, where you can target different parameters across this, uh, this bottom row of, of, uh, of encoders. And then this top section is split into two. The, top, uh, the, the left eight encoders are channel control. So they're doing all of the parameters for whatever the selected channel is. So imagine just like SC48 channel control, that is mimicked here. It, all the parameters appear in the same order when you spill them and such. Um, on the right hand side, we have what we call global control. Now global control is giving us access to uh, aux and group masters, VCA masters, matrix masters, monitors and mains. So all of our kind of output functionality. And what we can do there is we can spill those things so that we can see our aux masters at the same time as having something different banked to the, uh, banked to the faders. So even though it's got 16 faders, I can still control um, all of my input faders, um, but I can s have quick access to my output uh, levels at the same time by just having them targeted to the global section. Uh, in addition to that, I could put this bottom row of, uh, of, uh, of encoders into, into in a, an AUX send mode. So I've just pressed the AUX button. Now what I've got up here is um, AUX send 7, for example. Okay, so I've got the levels for AUX send 7 for everything that's banked to the control surface targeted to these uh, channel encoders. Now if I flip them down to faders, um, I can of course control that level via via the faders. Okay, that's functionality that all digital consoles have. But what's cool here is I can navigate the next mix just by pressing page left or right. You can see all the different mixes are appearing. And at the same time, I can target this. So I can now see all of my AUX masters on the encoders at the top, left, top right, sorry, and access any of the, of the feeds, any of the mixes, send levels into those buses from the faders. So although we've only got 16 faders, um, uh, we've been very conscious about the design of the product to provide maximum control and maintain that tiny footprint without just making a small console and squeezing everything onto it. You know, we've, uh, we've provided it in different ways. And you can access your matrixes up there or your VCAs up there and still have uh, inputs banked to the faders or navigate to your output banks on the faders as well if that's how you prefer to work. In addition to that, we have this section over the right-hand side that we call the function section. Now, that's the same as what you see with other venue consoles. Uh, it's different for S3 in that we have uh, added uh, another eight buttons there, and they're bankable. So we've got 16 function switches. Now, those function switches can do a number of different things uh, by uh, you know, configuring in our options events page. They can um, change view modes within the software. Uh, they can trigger the recording or playback to the two-track USB recording device. They can even trigger stop, record, playback um, in Pro Tools. They can even uh, arm all tracks in Pro Tools that are being sent from S3L. It even knows the difference between a, a track which isn't being sent from S3L and a track that is. The Pro Tools functionality has been uh, significantly updated with this, with this console. So we now have a 64 tracks of I.O working over a single Ethernet cable between Pro Tools and S3L. And S3L will be the only console that allows that capability with regular Pro Tools software. So we can do all of that over a single Ethernet cable. Also coming down that Ethernet cable is VenueLink. And VenueLink is our proprietary method of sending information from a live sound console to Pro Tools. Um, and what that does is it dramatically speeds up setup time, configuration time, and removes human error from, uh, from your setup and conf conf uh, configuration. So as soon as you launch Pro Tools, it says, I can see Venue, create session from Venue. You just click create session from Venue. And then it will load the Pro Tools session with all the correct track names and patching to match your console. It's taking that data from that. Now, that's existing functionality in Venue 2.9 software. But we've updated it so that we can now control the transport of Pro Tools directly from you know, the control surface. Um, that, in addition to being able to target Pro Tools and use the control surface as a uh, controller for Pro Tools and future functionality um, means that we've got a very integrated system here. 
In addition to that, the virtual sound check workflow that we invented when we, uh, when we launched D-Show has been updated further with this console too, so that it can work on a channel by channel basis. So you'll notice that the way that things have worked in the past is that you engage virtual sound check, replace your stage box with the feeds coming in from Pro Tools that you've recorded, and now you can, you can uh, control the mix without the band there, and that's your virtual sound check, right? right? Well, we've updated that a little bit further so that we can now do that channel by channel. So every, uh, let's see if we can see this actually here within the software. Yeah, here we go, look. So this button we call here the Pro Tools input switch. And what the Pro Tools input switch does is, is target a toggle between targeting the stage input for the channel and or targeting the associated Pro Tools playback channel for the for the uh, for the input channel. Excuse me. Um, so if we engage that switch, we can now see that the kick drum has come alive, and we've got a feed from Pro Tools. The little uh, LED on that button becomes illuminated, and now we can see that that's the feed from Pro Tools. That is virtual sound check now. Virtual sound check is no longer needing to um, to reboot the system it's a button press and we can do that on a channel by channel basis for any one of the 64 channels or we can do it for everything at once globally so we still have the capability to kind of replace a stage box if we want that's a global virtual sound check or we can we can make that change and bring in individual tracks back from you know back from stage channels back from stage and so if it was triggered by a click track or midi or something like that they could actually fill in what had already been recorded Absolutely. if with band members aren't there or something like that so it so it actually takes care of playing Pro Tools live as well as virtual sound check all at the same time. It does indeed, yeah. And the, the, the concept that I really like about it is, um, imagine you've, you've recorded a show last night, you've done that 64 inputs from stage, you've done it all into Pro Tools over single ethernet cable, you've done all that cool venue link configuration stuff, now you're gonna do your virtual sound check the next day. So you can put the console into virtual sound check mode and then perhaps what the singer wants to come along and jam over the, uh, the virtual sound check, all you do is engage her track back to stage, she plugs into exactly the same slot as she was in last night, sings over the mix from last night, it's a complete clone of the, uh, of the sound that you had the last night. So you can dial in her monitor mix, you know, with her standing there in, in real time without the band needing to be there at all, which is, which is just phenomenal, I think that's awesome. And you can toggle that back and forth uh, on a channel by channel basis. That's really, really cool. Okay, so uh, cost again and when it's, when it's going to ship. Okay, it ships late summer this year. Uh, cost ranges in, from 17995 for a 16 channel system up to uh, 29980 for a uh, 64 remote I.O. box system, 64 mic pre system I should say for four remote I.O. boxes. So a 32 channel system with 32 mic pre's on stage uh, would be just under $22,000. Cool, and if they want more information, the Avid's website is? Uh, it's avid.com, yeah. Uh, all the information on S3L is up there. I think it's avid.com slash S3L. Uh, go on there, all the feature set, the, uh, the, uh, the specs, the, uh, the dimensions, the complete readout of the entire functionality of the, uh, of the console is all up there. Cool, awesome. Well, thank you, Al. This, thank is, you. this is really neat, and it's definitely different than anything else out there right now. Definitely something cutting edge. All right, cool. thanks a lot. Thanks very much. Yep.